Kelly Kupo is a singer-actress who is gigging regularly around Melbourne. She also happens to be the leading lady of a musical I co-wrote, produced and directed called Audrey Hepburn and I Consider Our Assets. Kelly is a super, super talented girl and she's our guest today. Kelly Kupo, welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. <laughs> Oh, I waited to hear your laugh. I knew it would be there. Do you know, we ran into one another. We didn't run into one another, but you, you contacted me on Facebook. I can't remember how long ago. It was a few months ago. And one of the things I remember as I walked up to meet you for a cup of coffee was your incredible laugh. So let's start off this podcast with where does it come from? Oh my gosh, where does my laugh come from? I think it comes from a little bit of like nervous energy that I carry sometimes, but I just love to laugh. You love to laugh? Yeah. And what makes you laugh the most? Oh gosh, just being ridiculous. Life makes me laugh. <laughs> and does, does, is there a particular person in your life that makes you laugh? I mean, the first person I think of is myself. <laughs> All right. Well, well. I look. Actually, before we get on to um, singing and um, Audrey Hepburn oh, and I consider our assets. Yes. There is a particular person in your in your life. I've been searching oh. um, for things about oh, you because we know you're you're a great singer and a great actress. But what we didn't know is you do have a little man in your life, and his name is Ralph. Oh, Ralphie! Oh, well, that's gonna make me cry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why is that? Oh my God, no. Ralphie is like the man who has my heart, honestly. <laughs> God, this podcast isn't going, isn't going well. And why, why, um, why is it oh going to make gosh. you cry? Oh, well, so Ralphie got really sick in lockdown. Oh, okay. Um, so he's no longer with us. But I carry this pendant with me everywhere I go, so he's always here. But yeah, I yeah, he's just my now he's my angel. But so yeah. he's 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 Ralphie in heaven. He's Ralphie in heaven. But he'll always be your great love, is that right? Yeah. Um. Oh, honestly, he taught me how to love again, pretty much. Yeah. In what way, Kelly? Gosh. I think Ralph came into my life at a, at the time I really needed him. Yeah, our love affair began at the start of lockdown, 2020. He was a senior pug, so I knew I wasn't always going to have him for a long time, but I didn't expect I would fall incredibly in love with him. And yeah, we kind of saved each other. I was there when he needed me and he was there when I really needed him. Actually, you know, one of the, one of the themes from um, Audrey Hepburn and I Consider Our Assets, which she played the lead, Liz O'Sullivan, was about mental health. And... Um, um, the lockdown did put people into very strange mental health states, didn't it? Absolutely. And we, um, during rehearsals, we talked a lot about mental health, we did. which I want to get back to later on in the podcast. So let's hold that and let's put okay. Ralph on hold as okay. well. Got it. And let's go to something else just to start off with. I want to talk about music and your relationship with music. And I want you, first of all, to, <laughs> this is a strange podcast because we're talking about things that have in the past yeah because i'm about to ask you what does olivia newton john's hopelessly devoted to you song mean oh i just got goosebumps so that's one of the first songs i ever sang like in a music room in high school yeah and i just obviously love olivia yeah it just i guess like now i'm 40 it's I've been able to carry that song with me for a long time and yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just a beautiful song. It is, it is a beautiful song. It's funny, when I think of, um, when I think of Livy Newton-John, I, I do think of I Honestly Love You um, more so than Hopelessly Devoted to You. Does I Honestly Love You resonate with you as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a no? Did you tell me no? Maybe, oh, I don't know, Hopelessly Devoted to You, maybe it's a bit, suits me, you know, in a nutshell, that is kind of me. Like, if I, when I love someone, I love them deeply. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying to me in rehearsals about the character of, of Liz, Liz O'Sullivan, the girl from Glen Huntley. Yes. Um, I remember you saying to me that this was you. Yeah. This character was you. Mm. Well, tell people what you meant by that. So, obviously, when I found out about the auditions and it was about Audrey Hepburn, I was, in, you know, intrigued. And then when I found more about Liz O'Sullivan, I remember when I first read the script thinking, oh, my God, this is my life on paper. <laughs> 
So honestly, I connected with her struggles just as a, you know, 20-something growing up in, you know, just life. And, and um, her mental health struggles absolutely. as well. So yeah, she basically had, you know, lots of different voices in her head um, telling her what she should be doing, but really she she came back to her what her heart was saying. So for me... I've definitely had, you know, times in my life where I've just maybe had a, a voice that wasn't always a healthy voice in my head, and I've had to learn how to retrain my brain to really try and stop <laughs> stop listening to that voice because it's not the truth. Yeah. You know, you know, one of the one of the things we really connected on while um, rehearsing the show was therapy because yes. we'd both been through therapy. Yes. Did uh, Audrey Hepburn and I consider our assets in 2015? Yeah. Um, now we're seven years or eight years along. Wow. <laughs> We're eight years along. Is life better now for you mentally? Absolutely. So I have a lot more tools in the tool belt to and strategies, strategies I should say, um, to help me, you know, just get through life easier. Yeah, for me, I think I'll always be that person that does not struggle with mental health, but just kind of can rear its ugly head. And I've really done so much work on myself to try and like just have a healthy, loving relationship with my with my mind. Does music help at all? Absolutely. And, yeah. and is is um is there a particular style of music? Does jazz or pop help more with mental health for you? For you, so I mean. definitely I connect with soul music probably for those reasons. So like Billie Holiday, just yeah, those smoky soul singers I love. Jazz, I only kind of came across a few years ago when I was singing on a cruise ship when I um went from knowing about three jazz songs to having to learn about 150 and so I now do have a deep love of jazz and as I'm getting older you know jazz kind of suits me a bit more <laughs> um but definitely but yeah like for me music has especially as a teenager that's kind of why I began to sing I just connected to music yeah deeply and always used to sing in my room to like Alanis Morissette so if that tells you anything about me <laughs> Jagged Little Pill is that yes, right? Yes that's the one. Which was the name of your cabaret oh no your cabaret was called? I changed it to Jagged Little Cow. Jagged Little Cow. <laughs> because I have a nickname of Little Cow those who know me call me Little Cow. Hey just um just talking about your um cruise. Yes. You went to the Antarctica? I did. And you were singing in Antarctica? I did. And I still have to pinch myself that that was my reality. So that was your, you were singing on the boat in Antarctica, was it? Yeah. So um, left from Boston and kind of just sailed around America, Canada, South America and ended up in Antarctica. So I pretty much got paid to, <laughs> to sing to the whales. It was magnificent. Antarctica is such a magical place, and if anyone listening gets a chance to go, you must. Why must I go? Tell me why I must go. Oh, I remember when I first got there, I had this moment of standing out on the top deck and just looking out to this majestic, you know, landscape, and everyone else I was with was kind of like down in the crew bar getting drunk, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I just had this moment, and I burst into tears, and I remember just thinking, I'm just a girl from Reservoir. (laughs) And now I'm traveling the world singing in Antarctica. Like it was pretty special. And I'm, I feel like I'm back there now. Like it was just majestic. And if we could take you back there right at this very moment in time. Yes. What would you sing? Oh, gosh. I don't know why, but the song just came to me was <laughs> is um, At Last, you know, by Etta James. Oh, no, sorry, Ella Fitzgerald. No, which one is it? Now I'm conf- confusing myself, but probably At Last. At Last. Mm. I've, um, Cindy Lauper, yes. of course, recorded a version of At Last as well. Do you know your octave range? Um. Oh, that's a good question. I would probably have to go back and check it. So, no, all I know is I'm a mezzo-soprano. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you know when you came in an audition for us? We'd heard a lot of uh, singers that day, but I do remember, um, and I don't know what it is that draws a director to an artist, but I do remember when you sang. It was incredible, and I loved your voice. And and to this to this day, I know how hard you worked. Uh, to create that role of Liz O'Sullivan, and I really appreciate it. So I just thought I'd say that as I ask you my next question. You've gigged with a lot of bands. Yes. Can you remember any of the names of them now? (laughs) No. (laughs) That's such a good question. It's almost like, you know, when you travel and you in Europe and you just see one castle after another and you cannot remember where they were, what what country you were in? It's kind of like that. (laughs) So you cannot remember one name. One name. Oh, I mean... Look, 
look, I actually do understand that because I've directed over 60 shows and I have to look up my resume yep. to remind me what I've done. Yeah. You know, as well as other things I've done at home. So I do understand. But is there any any that spring to mind? Is there any moment with one of those bands that you'd never forget? Oh, my gosh. Um, wow, that is such a good question. I think, like, for me, just the most insane feeling is when I'm on stage and just singing to, like, I've sung in different, you know, arenas and, I don't know, you've, you've, you've stumped me there. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're really saying, Kelly, is all, all those bands are forgettable. <laughs> I knew this was going to be a strange (laughs) session, but yeah, okay. Look, I'm running with that. I'm saying now one of the one of the things that has happened to you recently that I'm sure you want to talk about because I know you well enough to know you'll want to spill the beans. Mm -hmm. Turning forty, how does that happen? I mean, actors, actresses, you know, you know, directors, you know, anyone creative. Nobody wants to turn forty. But I saw your pictures on Instagram and you seem to be having a really good time. You know, it's so funny because just even taking age and being an actor into, you know, you're always trying to like be seen to be someone who can play someone, you know, who's 20 to 40. And it's like, well, actually, if you're 35, you should probably be playing someone who's 35. But that's just kind of the way the industry is. And I don't know. I think I've grown and learned so much about myself. I was really excited about turning 40 and I even made it a real point to look and feel as good as I could because I'd put on a lot of quite a lot of weight in lockdown. So I'd lost all you that didn't weight. Put on I weight know, in but lockdown. I put on a lot. So I got really depressed and just yeah, comfort um food was my only comfort basically and hanging out with Ralph. So yeah, so lost a lot of weight, got fit, got active, got happy, got healthy. Um and now I'm forty and I'm feeling really empowered. It's really yeah. I really love being 40 and it's like I had that moment the next day feeling like don't fuck with me (laughs) like I've been on this earth for 40 years I'm not putting up with anyone's shit um you know be kind to people but also yeah I'm just not just you're just really um careful about who you spend your energy with do you think Audrey Hepburn would think today don't fuck with me I mean she probably wouldn't swear (laughs) 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 <laughs> but I'm from Reservoir. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. And I think she had that kind of energy and character about her anyway, but she just did it with a lot more elegance and class. Okay. <laughs> now, I've got something here for you, which might just surprise you a little oh. bit. It's some quotes from Audrey. Yes. And I just want you to, and we'll just we'll just discuss them as we go along. I want you to tell me what you think of them now. Okay. In terms of being a modern woman, and Audrey Hepburn in many, many ways was someone that we think of retrospectively. But yep. in terms of being a modern woman, what do you think of her thoughts? This is this one you'll like, I'm sure. I believe in pink. What does I, that mean to you? I believe in pink as well. So pink to me is like flirty, fun, feminine, light. Yeah, and that was a big theme in the musical. And yeah, I remember I spoke to you about a friend that I'd just lost, my friend Brooke at the time, who lived and breathed pink. So for me, it's like just, yeah, it's a colour, but it's like um, energy. I don't know. And yeah, it's a really special, like when I think of pink, I think of my friend Brooke. So for me, it's like a bit of a special connection there. And when I think of pink, I think of you. Aww. Because <laughs> you would always say to me, Noel, I believe in pink, which, which was your way of telling me that you believed in the music. Yeah, so, absolutely. So we both think of Aww, pink in nice. a slightly different way. Yeah. This one is a good one. I believe that laughing is the best calorie burner. Do you agree? <laughs> Well, if it was, I would be size six. <laughs> but I know what, what, you know, where Audrey's going with that. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Laughter is, I don't know. It's just, why wouldn't you? Because what's the opposite? You know, wouldn't you rather laugh than sit in your room and cry? Well, that's true. Unfortunately, I've done both. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> More laughter, less oh, crying, God, I think. Um, I think you can't reach 40 and not laugh and cry. Absolutely. I think it comes it comes with the territory. What about this one? I kind of agree with this one. I probably need more of it. I believe in kissing. Kissing a lot. Well, it's been a while now, so <laughs> <laughs> if anyone listening to this podcast wants to give me a kiss, come and let me know. <laughs> The, the, I'm sure. I'm sure you're going to have men lining up. Oh God! Well, yeah, they, they are can, already. They can find you on Instagram, <laughs> and the Ke- under Kelly Coupo Music. <laughs> Kelly Coupo's music. Kelly Coupo Music. Hit me up. <laughs> 
Now, here's another one for you. I believe in being strong when everything seems to be going wrong. Yes. What does that mean to you, Kelly? I've had to be strong my whole life. So I grew up in quite a dysfunctional family, I would, I would say. And yeah, I guess even like with my laughter, you know, I am known as that girl who's always happy, always laughing, but that's not the case. And it's not that I'm not being authentic or, or being fake when I'm this happy version of myself. But yeah, I've had to, um, I've been through a lot that I've had to kind of remember that those things that happened in my life aren't me. Um, so that's taken a lot of therapy. How many so, years of therapy have you actually had? I've been seeing my psychologist since I was 15. Wow, mm. I didn't, I didn't realise. I, I thought, for some reason, I, I, I felt, because I went to therapy for 18 months, yep. I felt you'd, you'd finished, but oh. I didn't realise you were going that no, long. No, I'm going tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to talk about this podcast? <laughs> I will, absolutely. He'll love it. Um, no, I I do. And it's not that I go, I've been every week since I was 15, you know, but, and it's just like, it's a healthy thing, right? Like it's not, oh, I need to see my psychologist. I'm not coping. It's like, okay, this came up for me. I really want to work it out so I can be a better version of myself, you know? So yeah. And I've had to deal with a lot of trauma and, um, yeah, just difficult things that some people might not necessarily come across. What would you What would you say to somebody who was thinking of having therapy and just um, was unsure about it? What would you say to them? Well, <clears throat> it's funny because therapy has made me a better performer. It's made me be vulnerable. It's made me learn how to connect with people. It's made me dig into parts of myself that I not necessarily have wanted to. And now I can use those when I'm on stage, either singing or, you know, performing in a musical. What do you think Audrey would think about therapy? I think she would think it's quite a healthy uh, tool and... Yeah, it shouldn't be seen as a bad thing. It's it should be like for me a red flag is if someone doesn't go to therapy. <laughs> you know, like you should be sorting your shit out. Mm. Yeah, and not and not transferring it onto your partner, friend, you know. Children. I I I don't know the statistics of this, but I feel that more women would go to therapy than men. Well, but that's probably why the um, suicide rate for men is quite high, right? Like women are, are better talkers usually. And unfortunately men, you know, um, yeah, just the way society is. And I'm really passionate about just speaking up about mental health because I think people that, whether they know me briefly or they've known me for 40 years, are sometimes shocked when I tell them these things about me or the things that I've been through and things I've struggled with because they just see this, you know, bright, bubbly Kelly on stage. But there's so much more to, yeah me and people really well, there's more i guess i guess in many i always think of pe- people as being a coin they've got two sides yeah i always view people like that yeah um and i think even in, in an acting sense that's a good way to approach a character as well yeah let's just go back to audrey's sayings again i believe that tomorrow is another day and i believe in miracles do you believe in miracles i do believe in miracles when was the last time you had a miracle happen? I turned 40. <laughs> like, you didn't think you'd make 40? No, Is absolutely that what you're not. saying? Okay. No, absolutely not. No. I was surprised when I made 30 and I'm happy I'm 40. I'm happy I'm here, but I've definitely had thoughts in the past that I did not think I would be 40. Okay. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> now, you said something to me at the start. Before we started, I asked you a question, which was, uh, is there anything you'd like to talk about in the podcast that I could lead us to? But, you know, you're so you're so bubbly and you're so present at the moment that I haven't been able to lead us into the question, um, the, the subject you wanted to talk about. So I'm going to let, I'm just going to ask you, you wanted to talk about near death experiences. Yes. That's right. So <clears throat> I'd had a near death experience and it completely changed my life. And that's when I really got into my music and acting. When you say near death, what, what happened? So I was living in London in my early twenties, just living, traveling, drinking beer. <laughs> and I was caught up in the London bombings on my way to work. So I was extremely lucky and um, yeah, it was really, really difficult to process at such a young age. I started getting, you know, panic attacks, nightmares, anxiety, didn't want to leave the house. So incoming psychologist to deal with that stuff. But the positives really, uh, I realized, oh my gosh, one minute we're here, the next we're not. How am I living my life? Am I happy? And I looked at it and I dissected it and I was like, you know what, there's so much I want to change. and. I started to study acting, I got into my first band, so really like I started, 
I mean, a late, I was a late bloomer, if you want to say, but I think I was 25 when I started, when I joined my first band and I was, yeah, 30. What was the name of your first band? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. She's forgotten you guys. She's forgotten her first band. It's probably all the alcohol and drugs I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we're getting somewhere. You realise this has turned into a therapy session. You do realise this. We're, we're acting out a scene from Audrey Hepburn and I consider our assets. Oh, boy. So So yes. the near-death experience changed you. And, it and did. And it, it made you realise that life was not forever? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And just that, uh, you know, a day feeling depressed or sad or not fulfilled is is a day wasted and you know of course I still have those feelings at times but it's like okay no what do I really want to be doing what legacy do I want to leave behind what kind of a role model do I want to be to my nieces um and that's kind of what drives me to be a better person do you know my mother um uh, my mother attempted suicide but one of the thoughts one of the things she told me as a kid was that it was the most beautiful experience that she'd ever had and that she that she saw a light and she wanted to go there, but she heard a voice that said, no, you, you, you can't go. You've got a little boy to look after. And she said it was that voice that told her to come back for me, the little boy, is the reason she came back. But she said it was so beautiful mm. that um, she, she, she remembers saying in her mind, oh, no, don't make me go back. Do you, have you had anything like that with the bombings? Is, um, is it something no, like that? Nothing that, um, no, I haven't. But I have lost a number of friends to suicide. So it is something that's, yeah, definitely, it's it's really rough. And at the time, I, I didn't understand it. But now I just think, you know what, if they were in so much pain on this earth, you, how can you begrudge someone wanting to do that? Like, yeah, it's really difficult, but... Have yeah. you have you had those thoughts, Kelly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in my twenties, definitely. Yeah. So they've they've died away now. <laughs> yes, I absolutely. Yep, I'm feeling yeah so much just healthier, um, in you know my brain. <laughs> Do you know one of the big themes, of course, of Audrey Hepburn and I consider our assets is mental health. Yeah, people had mixed re- reaction to the, to that. People would say to me, the mental health theme is a little depressing. And I I was always a little bit annoyed by that comment because I felt that musicals could do more than just entertain. Absolutely. And and certainly that's what I tried to do with um, Audrey Hepburn. I tried to make it bigger Mm. than just colour and movement. Absolutely. And that's what I loved about it too. It wasn't just all sparkles and Hollywood. It was like, okay, let's talk about some deeper, darker issues here, but do it with grace and just education really. Because, yeah, I forget sometimes too that not everyone has had those thoughts or has depression and, um, yeah. When you think about Audrey Hepburn and I Consider Our Assets and Liz O'Sullivan, what are, what are your strongest memories about performing that? Thinking I wasn't good enough to lead a musical, honestly. So I had to do a lot of work on my self-worth and just feeling like I was was deserving of a lead role. Also just being able to say I've performed in the Spiegel tent, that was pretty incredible. Making amazing friends, connecting with yourself. Yeah, just I remember feeling um, like I've made my fa- like family and friends really proud as well. So that was that was nice. What would you say to the little girl who picked up the sheet music to hopelessly devoted to you? What would you say to her now that you're the big four zero? Oh wow! What life advice, <laughs> like Audrey Hepburn did, you know, giving giving advice like she did, telling people to believe in pink. What it, what advice? would you say to that little girl now? So definitely keep standing up for yourself, but don't be so hard on yourself and continue to trust your gut because it's never wrong. Now I've got one last thing to ask you. I went through your Instagram feed, (laughs) as I do, um, to find out a little bit more information about your your inner makeup Mm. because you're very protective of it. Yes. And I can feel it even between us now. We know one another very well. Yes. But I found this on your Kelly Coupo music <laughs> Instagram feed. <laughs> yes. Now, I don't know if you wrote it or whether whether you found it, but you wrote, or someone wrote, when you're on stage, the real world just drops away for that time. It's pretty intense. Mm. Does 
stage take you away from the real world? So I didn't write that, but I love that quote. And yeah, whenever I have a microphone in my hand or I'm on stage, yeah, everything else melts away and that's when I'm in my true form of bliss and um, when I really feel like I'm on earth to do what I was supposed to do. Well, Kelly Cooper, (laughs) believe it or not, we have come to the end of your 15 minutes of fame. Thanks for having me. (laughs) You have been always a delight and always such a laugh. and You're always smiling. But we know that underneath your smile, there is a serious person. There is, yes. And hopefully you've shared a little bit of that today with the audience. I hope I have. I think you have. Oh, good. I think you have. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Pleasure. (laughs) 